What's going on guys? This is Sydney coming here once again with yet another makeup video. So this makeup is like a swamp hag makeup. I had a whole bunch of prosthetics at the house. I just sort of, I sort of just grabbed a couple of this one and a good that one and matched them together and I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a swamp hag. Something green, something nasty, something draped with like seaweed things. And uh, that's it. That's why I did this makeup. My friend Gordon Tarpley modeled for me. So he was technically the witch. And I think it came out really cool. We put him in a fat suit and everything. Uh, he had a fat neck, really cool stuff. Um, that said, I'm just gonna get into the video because I'm gonna do a voiceover in this video because I haven't done a voiceover in a long time. And I figured uh, this is a little bit different makeup. Uh, I like the colors that I stacked in this makeup. So I'm just gonna do a voiceover. I'm gonna talk you through it. I'm gonna tell you what I did and how I glued it down and yada, yada, yada. And uh, let's just get to it. Here it goes, guys. Buh! Alrighty, so I'm gonna run you guys through this makeup um, and explain as much as I can. I know I'm gonna miss a lot of stuff, but uh, I'm just gonna give you a little run through of what this video is about. And here it goes. So this is Gordon Tarpley, my model. Um, what I'm doing with him right now is I'm just cleaning his face. I'm using a little bit of witch hazel to clean his face. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because when he shaves, he might have a little bit of lotion left over or a little bit of uh, shaving cream left over on his skin. So I just wanted to make sure that I got it all off. <clears throat> all right, so what I'm using here is I'm actually using uh, Telsys 5. Telsys 5 is my uh, adhesive of choice for this makeup. It's easier to clean off. Um, and it sticks really, really well. Uh, you could use Prosade. Prosade is much cheaper. You could use Prosade. Just Prosade for me is just a little bit harder to get off the skin. So I'm just going to make the removal easier on Gordon and use uh, Telesis 5. I'm using a large glue brush right here. This is the 127 by Delium Tools. The reason I'm using this brush is because this is a large piece. I want to lay it down quick. So you need a large glue brush and this 127 is my favorite glue brush to use on these large pieces. And again, I'm just using Telesis 5, putting it on the skin. I'm working from one side to the other. I want this to be symmetrical when I glue it down. Um, with zombies and with uh, mutants, it's not as necessary. Asymmetry is okay, but for this, I definitely want to get it down symmetrical. And that's what I'm doing. So now I'm using these, uh, this 128 uh, bent liner brush. The reason I'm using this brush is because it's bent, it's a longer bristles, and it works uh, really well for going around the eyes and getting into small places, laying down edges. And that is why I uh, like to use this brush. It's the 128 Bent Liner Brush by Dallium Tools. Pretty much love it. So again, uh, you know, if you're watching my other videos, what you want to do is when you're gluing down anything uh, like a full face or neck or whatever, you want to start from the center and work your way out, right? Work from one side to the other. As you can see, I just glued down that one side and now I'm over here and I'm gluing down this eye and then I'll switch back and forth. But first what I did is I put a strip on the nose and the forehead and I tacked that down because I wanted to match the center up perfectly first. And then I'm going to work in from one side to the other. <clears throat> and I'm still using that bent liner brush that I prefer to use. I like that bent liner brush. It's pretty awesome. So I want to keep this as uh, symmetrical as possible and that's why I'm working from one side to the other. Do, do, do one side to the other. Yeah, you go. Boom, boom. Lifting up and head, lifting up a little bit of the prosthetic, putting a little bit of adhesive, and then gluing it down. Now, what you don't want to do is miss a spot up under the prosthetic. If you miss a spot, so if you don't glue something down, if you miss a little strip of skin up under the prosthetic, if the model or actor makes a face, it might wrinkle in a weird way. So beware, glue down the whole prosthetic. Don't get a weird pocket underneath the prosthetic or it will wrinkle. And uh, I don't know if I said this, but these prosthetics are foam latex. Um, so they're basically a sponge. Um, that's why I like to use foam latex because uh, the, the foam absorbs the adhesive as well as it sticks to the skin. So it's a really nice bond. And foam latex breathes, it's lightweight. It moves with the face really well. Um, I just like to use foam latex pieces. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lifting up edges, like I'll lift up an edge, I'll go up under it with this bent liner brush. Uh, it just gives, gets up under the prosthetic really well. And then I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm working from one side to the other. I'm getting it done though. 
And the good thing about foam latex pieces is that yeah, it is a sponge, but if you stipple over the edge of, a, of the prosthetic, the adhesive will go through the prosthetic, absorb into the prosthetic and lay itself down. That's only with thin, thin edges. Don't do this with really thick, thick edges. All right, so right, what I'm doing right there is I, I just glued down his ears because I'm gonna put ears over the top of his ears and I want his ears to lay down so that the, uh, the other ears that I'm gonna put on top are, are going to uh, uh, sit right on his head. So what I did is put a little bit of Telesis 5 behind his ear, let that dry and pushed his ears back. Um, now this prosthetic, the witch face uh, on this, uh, comes with a chin as well. Uh, it does, but it comes with a pointy chin. I wanted a flat chin, so I'm using like an old age uh, foam latex chin right here. So this is like a hodgepodge of different prosthetics. It's the neck, the, the chin, the face, and the ears. None of them go together. I just wanted to make something different because I've done this witch uh, face before, twice. And I just wanted to uh, create something a little bit different. I wanted to to look um, like a you know swamp goblin. And that's what I'm doing. This is like a swamp goblin, swamp witch, swamp hag. So I wanted these weird goblin ears with this witch prosthetic um, and weird chin, just fat neck. Because I'm going to put him in a fat suit as well, a really cushy fat suit to make him look much bigger. Because Gordon is really really slim. Um, so when I glued down the ears, what I did is I just put a little bit of glue, a little bit of adhesive on the inside of the ears and then planted them down and made sure they match up. And if, if they didn't match up, I'd pull it up again, lay it back down. And then I went around and glued the edges down. So I'm powdering it with this, uh, uh, this is the, called the stomper brush. You put a little bit of powder on it, it's a sponge, and you can really push down edges with it. It's really good for around the eyes. All right, he got everything glued down. So now I'm blending the edges a little bit better. So this is just prosade on a orange sponge. Um, and I'm just stippling it on the edge. So if you have a bad edge, it uh, doesn't look that well. I like to fill it in with a little bit of prosade. The prosade will sort of fill the edge. Uh, if you have a really, really bad edge, you're gonna have to use Bondo, which is prosade mixed with Cabocil, so it's a thickened Bondo. But what I'm doing here is all the edges look pretty good. So I'm just blending it into the skin with a little bit of prosade. And that's just what I did there. And now it, it looks it looks like it blends pretty well. So this is foam latex, right? So with foam latex, you have to seal it with something. And what I'm sealing it with is Pax Paint. You seal foam latex with Pax Paint. And I'm using a Mel Pax right here to, uh, this is a Mel Products Pax to seal the uh, prosthetic. And I'm going in with my undertone. So this is this dark green is going to be my undertone, right? It's not going to be his final flesh color. It's going to be the undertone. Um, so it's basically the start of the makeup. And that's what I'm doing right here. So I'm sealing the prosthetic up. And the reason you want to seal it is because if you don't seal it with something, uh, if you use alcohol colors on it, water colors, that will just absorb into the sponge, which is foam latex. So beware. Make sure you seal it. Right there, so um, I put packs in all my brushes. Uh, people get all freaked out by putting packs in your brushes, but Mel's packs comes out pretty pretty easily, so don't uh, don't be scared. Now, if you make your own packs, do beware that it's going to be much stronger, so it's going to stay on the skin much longer, um, and so it makes it harder to get off. Mel's packs is relatively easy to get off the skin. So now I'm doing a little bit of dry brush. So I want the flesh to be a little bit lighter, but still green. So I'm going over with like an uh, olive color, almost like a lime, uh, lime olive. And I'm just sort of dry brushing over the top. I want to hit the high points. I want the prosthetic to pop. I want to see the form of the prosthetic, but I also want to stipple and, uh, and make his skin really splotchy. It is a swamp hag. It's going to have splotchy skin. So you'll see what I'm doing on the head up there. I'm really blending it. And I'm really just stippling some colors. This this brush that I'm using is the 195 uh, stipple brush, and it's just really great for doing large areas. And that's what you know, doing uh, doing big ball caps, big chest pieces, big necks, full faces. It's a really good stipple brush to use. And this is the Delium Tools uh, large stipple brush, and it is pretty awesome. You see how it's starting to blend? It's starting to look more like flesh, right? That first layer is really splotchy. And but when I go over it with this, it really starts to make it look like flesh. So now I'm spattering. This is a spatter gun that I got from Harbor Freight. It's basically a car <laughs> uh, paint um, uh, 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 airbrush, 
but if you turn it really really low pressure, you can spit color out of it. And so I'm spattering like a, a dark green, uh, maybe a purple and a really light green to really blend all the color that I just added together. And it's really, really splotchy on there. As you can see, you can see the little spots. It's like liver spots and stuff on the head. That's what I'm going for. So now I'm, I'm modeling the skin. I'm going into shadows. I'm going on the ears, inside the ears with a dark green color with airbrush. So I mixed up like a black and a green together. So it's a really, really, really dark green. And I'm modeling, so I'm doing the lips, the nose, uh, any kind of shadow spots, some like liver spots. Um, I like the tips of the ears to be really dark and nasty. So the tip of the nose is really dark and nasty. Um, and I'm just sort of modeling around. And now I'm also gonna use probably a, a dark purple as well in this makeup, uh, you know, do a dark green and then a dark purple um, with the airbrush. And I am using an Iowata airbrush because I like Iowata airbrushes. They're really nice airbrushes. And this is probably a little bit more expensive one. This one's probably like 250 or something, $250, but it's a great airbrush, I like it. All right, so now you can see how it's starting to come together. It's starting to look really nasty starting to look more like a swamp witch and that's what I'm going for. In the crease of the fold like of the neck like that I want that all looking nasty because I want the fold of the neck to look really gross so I'm doing like a lot of dark green in there as well. And as you can see on top of the head I did all kinds of spots and stuff. Um, I was like liver spots and, and weird splotchiness because you know it just looks good right? Yeah yeah it looks good. So the lenses are in. Um, those are nine millimeter SFX lenses by Kevin Carter. These are custom lenses I had made um, that I really liked. I wanted some weird zombie ones and he made these for me. Um, so these are just really cool lenses and I thought it would look really good with this uh, makeup. So as you can see, you'll see a little bit of red on the cheeks, ears, the nose, the chin has a little bit of red. That's a little bit of cream color that I'm doing around the eyes. I also dry brushed it and splotched it on the cheeks to give it more dimension. It looks so flat with just those green colors. I wanted to add a little bit of warmth into the cheeks, the nose, a little bit of irritation. Um, so I did that little bit of red cream color and that cream color was uh, from uh, the Bid and Eye Ultimate Effects palette, um, which I love to use. I was also using it around his eyes as well. So I blended my own color, sort of a purple, a little bit of maroon, and a little bit of green together, and got that nice color around his eyes. And if you're, you know, blended around the eyes, it's really nice to have the finger brush, uh, the 167 by Delium Tools, just to blend around the eyes really well. It's a nice soft finger brush, and it just works so well. And now it's starting to look like a, uh, a nasty swamp witch, right? A swamp hag, it's really come together. You see how it just build up colors. Um, so now I'm sealing it. I'm sealing the makeup with Bin Nye Final Seal. If you do too much of Final Seal, it's gonna give it a shiny look, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a nice, sweaty, shiny look. The Bin Nye Final Seal likes to dry shiny, so beware if you overuse it. It's gonna get really, really shiny. And so that's all I used on it, is that Bin Nye Final Seal to get that shiny look. So what I just put in his mouth, that is Mouth Effects by PPI by Dan Gilbert. Um, that's a brown, so that's down brown in his mouth, and it's just a temporary coloring for photos, for scenes, and as you can see, like right here, it's I actually dripped it out of his mouth, so it's going down his chin and really nasty. So I put him in a fat suit, I put some nernies on him, all those things draped on him, those are just uh, latex sheets that I made uh, to look like swamp material, and they're just draped on him. Um, to add to the wardrobe to make it more swamp like. So there's a fat suit, he has wardrobe, he has all his nerdies on him, and all together it really comes out to be a really cool looking um, swamp hag. Hmm? What do you think? And in these photos, I edited out the pupil so that it even looked creepier. I really wanted a creepy photo, so I took out the pupil. But yeah, it's pretty much that's the final makeup, guys. It's awesome. You know, listen to this, this, oh, this is funny. Oh, hi, children. <laughs> Would you like some candies? <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, <laughs> this is improvised by Gordon uh, Gordon Tarpley. He's pretty hilarious. <laughs> this was a Halloween makeup that I did, um, so I wanted to look really creepy and spooky, Halloween like. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, guys, and that is the final makeup. 
I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you get something out of it. I know I missed a lot of stuff, but this is my first time watching video, so I talked you through it the best I could. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what you think. And until next time, guys, I'm out of here. Bye. Oh, we have red vines. Mm. <laughs> or gobstoppers. Or nerds. What kind would